Hey guys, welcome back to the Kingdom Business TV channel. Here serving you, helping you grow your business by putting out content at least every single week. In this one, I'm gonna be talking about my five favorite Christian business books. You know, uh, it's, it's one of the questions that I get asked all the time, you know. In fact, most people say, what's the one book you would recommend? Well, obviously the Bible. Uh, but outside of that, if we're looking for some practical wisdom, I've got a few. Uh, you know, uh, for me personally, I've uh, I struggled as a reader right up until the the age of about 16. In fact, when I was 14, I had a reading age of 11, so I was really struggling with reading. Um, but you know, I guess I, I got a little bit better, and then of course, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, reading became wonderful. And uh, and I made it my commitment actually to read a book a week when I was a young entrepreneur, and I stuck to that for a decade or something like. Uh, I have a, I've got boxes of business books in a storage shed right now that I've, that I've read and, and, and just sitting there. So always been an avid reader. These days I don't get to, you know, having that amount of discretionary time. Uh, but having said that, still a reader and still probably read one to two books a month. And, and just, just love, love that kind of reading world and getting into people's minds. And so, but what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about knowledge? You might have heard, you might have heard a scripture. Uh, around something like through many advisors you'll have success or success comes through many counselors and if you've heard that wonderful but actually uh, actually the Bible actually says the same thing quite a few times um, so if we look at Proverbs eleven fourteen, it says this where there is no counsel the people fail but in the multitude of counselors there is safety right in the multitude of counselors there is safety now Counselors are pretty easy to come by in 2020, all right? So there's a million on YouTube, there's a million books, there's a million courses, so you can get a lot of those, right? But they bring safety. Now, what about this one? Uh, Proverbs 15:22. listen to this. Without counsel, your plans will go amiss, same thing. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Uh, and then Proverbs 24, 6 says, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Same thing again. You know, as we know from scripture, when, when, when they say the same thing over and over again, you want to stand up and take notice because it means that they mean it. And, uh, and it comes with an, another level of unction when it is said more than once. So I would say to you that, you know, like you should be getting into the minds of people that you want to emulate, right? Both, you know, both in the Bible where you can read about some of our heroes in the faith but also in the, in, the, in the more modern world, right? We can get into the minds of people. And so that's why I've selected my top five books and I'll kind of want to run through them one at a time and pull out the reason why I like it, not just say that it is a good book. All right, so number one is this book here. Now, uh, it's called God Runs My Business and it is the story of R.G. Letourneau. And if you don't know who he is, then you've got to ask yourself, are you a real kingdom entrepreneur? Because this guy, uh, he certainly wouldn't have been the first, but in modern history, uh, he would be the pinup boy for a, a guy that took it seriously, went all in and uh, produced a huge amount of fruit in his life. Now, this book, uh, just to give you an idea, RG was born in 1880, right? And so, um, you know, he, he, uh, uh, he, he's long gone. Um, but his legacy lives on forever. This book is so old that the edges of the pages are roughly cut. All right, that's how old this book is, right? And I, it's one of my treasure possessions. I absolutely love it. And it takes you through the story of RG, who there's another book, Mover of Man and Mountain, about him. He developed the, uh, the earth moving equipment uh, and, and that became the the all the patents that came with that uh, he was given them by the lord and he put them into production and completely revolutionized the way that earth moving took place it was horse and cart he came along he had a design that was pneumatic um and and it was funny because he built a phenomenally large business especially in post-war world war one when the government in america he's american were throwing loads of money at, at construction that basically he rode off the back of that and now, he's an amazing man for many reasons. Good family man, um, but you know, uh, but he had a profound effect on the gospel. He was the first, uh, he was the first real person to buy an aeroplane for the sake of ministry. 
And so he had his business that was very, very, very profitable. He had something like 4,000 staff, you know, producing earth moving equipment in, in multiple places across America. But he would finish up on a Thursday. He, he always had prayer meetings with his entire staff every day. Uh, bring it, like shut the factory down, bring them together, tell them they got to repent from their filth and go, you know, live a life for Jesus. But on a Thursday, he would finish and he would jump in his plane and he would go and do six to 10 speaking opportunities at churches and, and business groups, sharing the good news of Jesus before he got back to work on Monday morning. And he did that for nearly his whole, whole adult life. And, uh, and he used the profits from his business to, to do amazing work around the world. And, um, and so I just really appreciate that, that he used his business to fund his assignment. And because of it, we've got a great story to tell. Just to pick up on one thing, he actually, in here, they actually give you um, a bit of insight into how to structure a business to do a lot of giving. Um, it, it, it won't it won't apply like the structure names and and a lot of that doesn't apply today in in the true term of what it's written in here, um, but uh, but the concept still does, um, and in fact on a page 129, they go into really big detail about how much money was given away and how many shares and who owned them and what that meant in terms of retained earnings and profits and how much money went away to uh, to to charities and good causes and events in the kingdom of God. So. Anyway, uh, as all of these books I'm going to do, I'm going to put links in the show notes because you can still buy this book today and I reckon you should. All right, book number two, uh, The Happiest People on Earth. Uh, This one's a little bit harder to come by um, and it is the story of a gentleman by the name of Demos Shikarian. And if you don't know who that is, Demos uh, was the founder of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, which is a movement that changed the world. Um, And so what I love about this book is not only is it the story of, you know, his humble beginnings right through, it actually goes back further. So Demos was an Armenian. And uh, if you've studied church history, you'll know that Armenia uh, probably paid the highest price in history as a country for their faith. Uh, And uh, in fact, right right the way through to a boy prophet um, that came through Armenia two generations before Demos and said, God showed me there's a genocide coming and the, what, those that will flee to America will live and those that don't will all be wiped out. And that prophecy came to pass within 100 years. Within 100 years, uh, the Turks came over the hill and completely wiped out every single Armenian apart from those that had fleed. And, uh, and so they've got a lot to be happy for, hence why he's called his book, The Happiest People on Earth, because as a, as a Pentecostal believer, he's like, I've been given everything now. Not only have I been given life here, but I've been given life afterwards. And, and so it's a really cool story about that and about how God anointed him. And, and I guess if I can pull one thing out that I really love about the book, um, he really went hard after signs, wonders, miracles, and a big move of the Holy Ghost in the marketplace. And I just love that about it. Like when they ran meetings, it was, it was laying hands. They're expecting people to be healed, expecting um, you know, demons to be delivered, expecting that stuff. And, uh, and they saw it all over the world all the time. And um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but at its peak, Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship was, was millions of members and, um, and had some profound impacts on governments in the world. Um, in fact, I won't spoil it, but there's a part of the book that talks about a change with, um, within the Catholic Church that brought around a huge change. Uh, that helped usher in a move of God. And so it's an amazing book for that. By the way, if you're enjoying this, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out content every week because I just love serving you in this way. If you could do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and the bell, that would mean that you'll get all our future alerts. All right, book number three is not a business book. Uh, This is called Driven by Eternity. uh, And you would know this is a book written by John Bevere, who is probably one of my favorite preachers in the world right now. Uh, His nickname is John Severe because he just brings that pretty hard word sometimes. And very few people talk about eternity and the afterlife. And that's what this book is about. It's about being driven by, you know, the eternal perspective that we can have. And and, and as we should all know, as believers, everything about our life should be driven for eternity. Uh, you're sharing the gospel using this life to help populate the next life. And, uh, and I think we can do that in business incredibly well. So although this is not written from an entrepreneur's perspective, after you read it, you can't help not start to change your daily activities 
to be in line with using this life, preparing us for the one to come. All right. So I absolutely love this book, Driven by Eternity. All right. While I've got you, I don't know if you've seen this in our last few episodes, but I'm doing a giveaway. Uh, I wrote a cheat sheet. What does God say about me? And it's a whole bunch of scriptures. And the whole purpose of this document was so that you could read it and shift your identity. You know, the marketplace wants to erode your confidence and, and, and that extra zing that you've got. And it, and it wants to take that zeal out of your, your Christian walk. And so it's important that we continually fill up and, and plumb those wells. And so all this is, is a one-page cheat sheet where you can read scriptures about what God says about you. And before you know it, you can just get yourself fired up and aligned with, uh, with the very identity that God says about you. And you can have that completely free. Just head over to uh, kingdombusiness.com.au forward slash me, and you can have that right now. All right, book number four is Supernatural Business. Uh, now, you might be sitting there having a bit of a giggle. Yes, this one was written by me. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't that a little bit, uh, isn't that a little bit uh, self-seeking to put your book in your top five? Um, no, actually, because I wrote it because there was a gap in what was available uh, for a Christian business person, right? And so, you know, basically it's 12 practical strategies for bigger profits and greater influence. And the reasons why it's called supernatural business is because this is about lifting our eyes to Jesus, using our business to advance the kingdom. And, and, and the way I wrote this was the other books I'm talking about are very inspirational and we need that. But I also wanted to write a book that was tactical as well. So not only did it work on our identity and get us to focus on a bigger purpose, but actually in here, there's marketing strategies, recruiting strategies, and a whole bunch of really practical, tactical um, business building skills that you can have. I also have real life stories at the end of every chapter where I take what I taught and put it into a real life setting so that you can see that thing play out. And, um, and you know, we've sold, I don't know how many have sold, over 7,000 copies of this book. And, uh, and, and the feedback has been phenomenal because they like the practicality of this book. So yes, it is in my top five, but I wrote it because I didn't see this kind of book existing in the marketplace. So I wrote one. All right. And the fifth and final book, now please understand, they're not in any order. This is a great book too, is a, is a book called Business Unlimited. This is cool. This is, this is the story of Gunnar, Gunnar Olsen, um, who uh, was actually a good friend of Demos. And he started, this guy started um, the Christian Chamber of Commerce. So Chamber of Commerce is all over the world as a business group. Um, but Gunnar had a vision from God to start a Christian version of the Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and executed that. Like, you know, again, millions of members all over the world, conventions with 10,000 people. Um, but what I, okay, so just to pick on, on something I love from this book, obviously it talks about the success of the Chamber of Commerce, but actually it starts with the most humble beginnings. They, um, Gunnar and his wife, um, had a vision from God when they had absolutely no ability to execute on that. Have you ever felt like that? You ever felt like God gives you a vision that's so big and so scary that you just feel insignificant? Well, that's where these guys were but they're just faithful, faithful with the little bit that they had when it did not make sense at the start of their journey, when they were staring at this massive vision and nowhere with all to get it done. They just decided to step it out slowly and over a life achieved a phenomenal amount of bringing together the business community, evangelizing the business world, you know, and just ushering in uh, a presence of God into the marketplace. And so I love that book too. All of these are available. Now, I've got some good news. Um, I'm going to do some book giveaways. I'm actually going to give away a bunch of books. Uh, and I don't know how many. That'll be, that'll be decided on, on, on how, uh, how Santa Clausy I am feeling at the time. But here's what I want to do. I also I want to combine two things. I want to give gifts and I want you guys to start networking virtually in the comments below. So what I want you to do in the comments below, I want, I want you to give us um, a little bit about your business, right? Give us a very brief synopsis of your business and put in a URL, which will become a clickable link and people can search around and have a look at your web traffic, right? So I want you to introduce you to my world, right? And then we can potentially do some business together or whatever. 
put your uh, put your URL in there below, and I'm going to go through in a few days' time. I'm just going to randomly pick out some of you. I'm going to get in touch with you, get your address, and then I'm going to post some books out to you because I am feeling generous. Whilst you're putting a comment below, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be going back through all the comments. I want to get to know what businesses you're in. I want to have a look at your web pages. Uh, I just know that if we all come together just that little bit more and network, you never know what God might do with us being aware of each other's business. Well, that's enough for this session. I'll be back next week with some great training. Why don't you go and put your business in the comments right now? No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first I stretch. Tell them run it over.